All right, this is live. You guys can hear me. Please let me know when we'll get this started. Sorry for being very late today. I had to update OBS before I got on, so it was pretty bad time. I was already late. So I'm going to use it as an excuse, but probably we were extra late today. But looking forward to the race today. I know road courses aren't the most exciting, but the Xfinity race I thought was pretty fun. Probably turn off the notifications there. But had about 100 of you waiting. Appreciate y'all being here. What's up, Bill? All right, let me pull up all my stuff and we will get ready to roll. Sounds good. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'll go from top to bottom on the chat. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll try to answer all of them. Pretty much said everything I wanted to say on my preview video, although I am always giving just first initial reactions on that. Then once I actually run projections and look over the slate, I have more time to digest it. I do change my stances on a couple of things. And I feel like one thing I wanted to point out was, I think I remember saying I wasn't going to be a huge fan of SVG just because I can play guys like Kyle Busch, AJ Allmendinger, Ty Gibbs, William Byron, that price range. But once I actually ran projections, SVG looks really good. So I will plan on having a good chunk of SVG. So I want to kind of backtrack on that statement because I just thought these other guys might project a little bit better. But SVG is one of my better projected drivers on this slate. So I, I will have more than I anticipated on SVG. Just wanted to get that out of the way because I feel like I remember saying I wasn't super high on him. But projection-wise, he looks pretty good. Let me get the donors out of the way. At first, I do appreciate you, Chris Jenkins. As always, he says, since there are so few dominator points, do we even need to look at doms and, or do we need to focus on the finishing position? Yeah, dominators really don't matter too much. It kind of goes hand in hand. I always say you need to build for high finishing position potential, but at the same time, those are the guys that are probably getting the dominator points anyway. We have like right around 70 laps today, so take 70% of that. There is really not that many dominator points. To go around, especially with the uh, caution laps, which I'm assuming we're going to have here at Coda. It can be a bit chaotic, especially in some of those turns. So you're not really banking on dominator points. I would say the three, well, I'd say the four guys that are potential dominators are going to be your uh, top four starting drivers. Just for Bell in the fourth slot, Tyler Reddick in the third, Ty Gibbs in the second, and William Byron on the pool. I mean, there's some other guys that could make some noise for that. Maybe a Chase Elliott. Maybe a Ross Chastain, but those are your four main guys. You'd expect to lead some laps. And I wouldn't go too heavy on the front row in the same lineup just because with lack of dominator points, they don't really correlate the best together. Like, I think in some situations, you can roster them together, like some Ty Gibbs and William Byron. I mean, it's very risky, obviously, but if they can finish one, two, or both in the top three, and they're the ones trading fast laps and laps led, it can work out, but just know it's a bit of a risky scenario there. So, I only reserve that for tournaments. I think in cash games, if you want to roster one of those, Three drivers in the front. That is fine, but I wouldn't go more than one. I do appreciate the dono. That is a good question. And DJ Stoner says, four new mason jar. They hydrated, sir. Yeah, I know. Still have the, whatever you want to call this, the water bottle. <laughs> no, forgot the mason jar again. All right, we would have been even more later. So, figured that probably wouldn't be the best way to go. Yeah, was first one here. He says, hello, chat. This is Chris's makeup artist. He's running late. Not responding to my text or calls. We were searching local pickleball courts for clues about, her, about his whereabouts. Funny guy. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, Dan says, who is the best play on DraftKings $7,000 or less? For me, I think that's got to be Noah Gregson. He's only 6500 bucks. He is starting dead last. He is going to move forward a matter of how much. I'm not really sure. My projections gave Noah Gregson, and I build pretty conservative projections because I'm not going to build really based off the ceiling. But from a median standpoint, I gave him 29 and a half points. That's a 27th place projected finish. I think there's a lot more room for upside there. I think it's very conservative. But even then, if he contends for a top 25, we're talking about a pretty easy day for Noah Gregson. So if you're playing cash games, he is definitely one of the starting points. So Gregson for me down there. And like I said in the preview video, it's going to be easier for these place differential guys to hit this week. Just because we had the stage cautions back, we're going to bunch everybody up. I mean, last year, if it stayed green for the most part, you're starting 35th. I mean, you can gain a little bit depending on how fast the car is, but you might just suck there in the majority of the day. But like for Joey Logano, for example, he's starting 35th today. I don't think he's going to have an amazing car, but I gave him a 20th place finish. That is 5.37x, 39.7 points. That's a 
perfectly fine day at that price point. So it, the place differential does look pretty decent overall. Fifty likes Kobayashi. Yeah, I don't think he's a bad play necessarily. I got Kobayashi optimal around ten to fifteen percent of the time. Not a terrible play, but there is going to be some more popular PD plays down low. But he would make sense to try, try to get a little bit different. What's up, Potato? Says Chris doesn't need a mason jar for his water. I will personally feed him water from my cup hands. My sweet friends. <laughs> oh, that's funny. What's up, Aaron? Happy race day. Got Ty Gibbs getting his first cup win today. Got him at plus 1,200 early. Who are your biggest sleepers today on DraftKings? It's a great bet. So we're going to be going head-to-head because -head I got Byron and Bell at 1,200 earlier in the week. So... I love all those bets. I love your Ty Gibbs bet. I wish I bet on, uh, got on that earlier. I was trying to get him longer at 1,500, but it never, never came and obviously qualified well. So we should be going head to head today. Look like the two best cars. Biggest sleepers today on DraftKings. I'm not sure if he's going to be a sleeper or not. I'm still trying to figure out the ownership on Alex Bowman. I currently am projected for low 20s, but Bowman is one of my favorite GVP guys on the slate today. He runs pretty well at Cody, he runs well at road courses, kind of an underrated road course driver in my opinion i gave him a 13 place finish i think there's upside for more here around 36 points so it looks pretty good to me to get off some of that chalk today i mean i got him projected pretty much the same as guys like martin truex rush test and kyle bush and you're getting a pretty big discount right there so do the galaxy one quite a bit another sleeper chris rebel i think he's got one of the best cars in the field today and if he comes out and wins but if you're playing chris rebel you pretty much need him to win keep that in mind it's for a starting point in that uh salary so if you're playing chris rebel Need him to win, but I do think that's in the cards today. Obviously, AJ Allmendinger, but I really kind of as a sleeper at Coda, but some of the guys I'm targeting in tournaments love Chris Pusher today. Not super sneaky, though. As far as super sneaky is, I mean, not really a ton I love. I'm trying to look at ownership here and see which guys that are maybe below 15% that I think look pretty good. Ross Chastain, I guess, could be a sleeper, kind of in that Christopher Bell range, but he's like $1,000 cheaper. You know, he's had success at Coda. Leave it three for three, finishing inside the top five. Also won a race before as well. I think Chastain, if we're trying to get off some of the chalkier guys starting inside the top 10, maybe Todd Gilland. Toby Ashi, potentially. Yeah, I don't know from and Jorge. Appreciate that. There's top three core, GBP DraftKings plays, and top three contrarian. Well, contrarian GBP would... Kind of go hand in hand, but if I'm playing tournaments today, I'm going to try to be overweight on the field on Alex Bowman. He's just grading out very well for me. I love AJ Allmendinger. And outside of that, I'm trying to figure out what the ownership is going to be on Chris Busher. Because if we're looking at the price points today, we have McDowell starting at 27th. That's mega chalk. We have Blaney in 28th, Joey Logano in 35th. Frisco in 32nd. So it's like you can't play everybody in this range. I'm hoping maybe Chris Busher just goes a little bit overlooked because he's starting mid pack instead of in the very back. So I'm going to be playing on being overweight on him as well. Yeah, tournaments for me. I'm trying to be overweight on Dinger, Busher, and Bowman. Mostly. I know they're not like extremely low on, but they're not going to be like the absolute talk. And you appreciate it. I don't know. Good morning, Dirty Bird. Good morning, Chris. Grab your beers ready. <laughs> it's race day. Uh, let's see. What's up, Ryan? Let's, get, let's cash today. I could use it. I mean, the last two weeks have not been great for me. Ryan Blaney let me down big time. Victim of the tires at some point, but everybody was. But Denny Hamlin, Martin Trickshner, knew how to manage their tires last time. Definitely worked out well for them. Hopefully, I can bounce back. Definitely hasn't been my favorite two weeks in a row. What's the best 7,500 guys you are getting to? Also, what's the optimal lineup build on DraftKings today? So the best sub 7,500 guys. Well, projection-wise, top few that are going to pop up. Joey Logano, number one. Uh, Brad Keselowski, Chase Briscoe. So just mainly some of those plays, differential plays down low that are popping at that price point. Optimal and DraftKings today, I believe, was like Byron Gibbs, SVG, McDowell, Gregson, Logano. Thing is, though, I mean, it's got one, two there, which, again, it, it can work. They project well, but at the same time, you kind of need perfection. And I am a little bit concerned about this whole track limit thing because we saw in the truck series and the Xfinity series that it's going to happen a lot. So it's going to be tilting. 
sure we're going to have a lot of drivers today that are running well and we get hit with the penalty at the end, which reminds me for the Xfinity race yesterday, we were all taken down because I do Xfinity and truck projections now. So we just all ran the Ocmo, which was like Dinger, SVG, Pligerman, Jesse Love, Austin Green, and I think that Russian guy, can I say his name, Kivion or whatever. The very end, we were all like taken down, race is over, and then SVG gets hit with that 30 second penalty at the end of the race, ends up finishing 26 out of what seconds. That was unfortunate. The rest of the well, but man, that, those track penalties are very, very annoying. Hopefully we can avoid those today. How many Ron John t-shirts at Publix parking lot? It was not a Publix today, so I cannot confirm that. It says two to three fast guys starting in the front mixed with place differential like Logano and Briscoe or more balanced with one of Gibbs, Willie B. And then, yeah, I kind of like the balance builds the best today because the, the cheap options are just terrible outside of like once you get past Noah Gregson it's just really bad like none of these 5k guys look good at all if I had to play any like I said Todd Gillen I think would be the one I get to but I don't have him projected very well at all like a 25th place finish equates to under 20 fantasy points so it's just really bad 6k and below so I would try to stay more balanced because a lot of these 10k drivers they have pretty much the same kind of projection as these eight, seven, and eight K drivers. So at that point it's like, well, why am I going to jam in Reddick with Larson and Chase Elliott and then force myself to play like a Justin Haley or a Corey LaJoy? It just doesn't make any sense, I think, for this late because there's just no dominator points. That's something you do last week to get in all those dominator points. When it's a track like this, I just don't really think it's necessary unless we had like a really big standout 5K guy, but I don't really think we do. What's up, Ma? Happy race day, fam. Good luck, everyone. Funny thing is, he probably hasn't been to Taco Bell since... Yeah, I don't even remember if I've ever been there <laughs> before. But I know you're a Lugano fan. I think everyone else is today as well. We just need him to not screw up. He just limps his way across the finish line today. Hopefully that's around a 20, 25th place finish. And that'll get you there in cash game. Maybe not so in tournaments, but it'll be good enough. What's up, Spread? What's up, Tito? Does Truex a log out? Back-to-back -back races. Being off, we're going for that turkey. Awesome. Although he's in a really weird range today. Like I got him projected for 35, starting in seventh, which is kind of the same as Rosh Chastain. He's also like a thousand dollars more expensive. It's just hard to get the Truex today unless he pretty much straight out wins or finishes top three, which chances are probably not. I gave him a nine nine point five place finish, which once you actually stack that up, I believe that's like an eighth. I got him finishing eighth overall. So I don't think Trix is going to be bad today, but Optimal is going to be tough. His thoughts on the 8 to 9K range versus the top range, think we can get the same plays and save a little salary. Yeah, I pretty much just said that, actually. So that went well. But yeah, I mean, like, I have SVG projected for 45 points today, and I got Reddick projected for 45 as well. Just a matter of decimal point difference. So it's like, yeah, I mean, why do I really want to spend that up much for those 10K guys? Like, I'm going to be playing them, sure. But they're not like a necessity. Like the way I got to 45 points for Tyler Reddick today, I gave him a 3.74 projected finish, which is the best of all drivers. I gave him roughly about nine laps led, six fast laps, which kind of try to spread out the uh, laps led across the top six for the most part. And that does have him as the highest projected driver on this slate, but value wise, it's only 4.3. Uh, what is my top four finishes for the week? Thanks for the help every week. No problem at all. Uh, top four I have projected is Reddick, Gibbs, Byron, and Bell as my top four. And in that order. Although I'm hoping uh, I got tickets on Byron and Bell at plus 1,200 earlier in the week. So I'm, I'm really hoping one of those two win. Also at Elliott at 900, but I, I love that one too much. I don't think he's got race winning speed. We'll see though. We'll see what happens. But I'm rooting for the other guys more. <laughs> Tyler says, any standouts? Any obvious FanDuel standouts other than Larson, Truex, and Busher? Yeah, so some of the guys on FanDuel that are projecting pretty well, the pricing's pretty different. So I have SBG as my highest projected on FanDuel. He's only $12,000, so he's going to be probably in a majority of my lineups over there. And don't forget, on FanDuel, the dollar points are even worth less. So it probably leans me towards not playing as much as William Byron Ty Gibbs as I would want to on drafting. So I think their worst plays over there. 
for the draft. And he's not saying you can't play them. I have, so I have the top 10 scores all within like two to three fantasy points. That's how tight it is on Vandal this week. So it's not like there's really any stark differences. So it's all very tight. But SVG, I like a lot on Fandle. Like Larson, he's very cheap at only 10.5. McDowell, Logano is free at 7,200 bucks. Doesn't need to do too much over there. And Alex Bowman's only $7,000 on Fandle. And he offers you a little bit of PD upside, but I think you can knock on the door in the top 10 too. So the other guys you said, plus them, I think there's some great options on Fandle. Higher finish, Bush or Hamlin? I think Hamlin might stage race. I think I have Bush a little bit higher. Let me. Yeah, I got Bush a few spots higher than Denny Hamlin today. It's not like a major difference, but if I had to pick between the two, I would take Kyle Bush. Plus, Bush has been pretty good at the road courses. Rovals, that's a bit of a different story, but road courses have been good for him. What's up, Keegan? Hopefully, you're doing well. Next to Hi, Chris. Hello, Nick. What are the optimizer settings, groups, slash rules today? I personally don't really plan on having any groups today. I mean, Coda, like road courses are decently projectable, but with the uh, track limits, stage racing back, I feel like I don't really need any groups today. If you want to make a group of the top like three drivers or top two instead of to a max of one, you could do that. But I think there are scenarios where like two of them could sneak into the optimal. But that's like the only group I would consider making if I did make any, but I will not have any today. What's up, Obi? Happy fun day. Hopefully, hopefully it's a fun day. What's up, Johnny T? What's up, Chris? What's the chalk lineup look like on Fandle? Any must plays for cash over there? Much appreciated. As always, so I ran my Fandle optima optimal earlier just to see what it was. And it leaves 1800 on the table. I don't know if I'm going to play it or not. I was just looking at builds because you guys know I wait till the last minute to build. But I was looking at them beforehand when I got on here. Right now, my Fandle optimal is SVG. Ty Gibbs, Kyle Larson, Joey Logano, Alex Bowman. Not sure if I'd play Ty Gibbs in cash on FanDuel just because, I mean, the dominator points are basically worthless over there. Now, if he wins the race, yeah, I'd want Ty Gibbs. He finishes second or third. we will want Ty Gibbs. So I'm trying to decide what I want to do. The next lineup looks a bit safer. So my second highest right now is SVG, Larson, McDowell, Bush, and Logano. I feel like that's got a bit of a better floor to it. So I think those are probably the ones I would consider as of right now but looking at some of the builds on Fandle, you can leave some money on the table like this one has about three thousand dollars left it's svg dinger larson logano and bowman and that's a good sounding lineup there is nothing wrong at all with that one it's like you can leave some money on the table over there i know DraftKings, some of the bills you can as well if you go pretty balanced but probably not as much what's up noah what's up sal made another one What's up, Carmi? How much chalk is too much chalk? Over 40%? Well, it depends what driver we're talking about. Really, I think the highest zone today is either going to be Joey Logano, Ty Gibbs, or Noah Gregson, maybe McDowell. I think that's your top four today. And I do have uh, Logano coming in right around 40% ownership. The thing is, though, I don't want to be too heavy on drivers today because I just think there's going to be a decent degree of ramness. I don't want to get caught up in just being absolutely screwed over by a track limit. Like, Sure, it sounds good to play like like it sounds great to play like 50 percent aj almanier today it's a road course he's blown 9k starting 14th like that sounds great but if you get hit with a penalty at some point it just screws your day up so i'm probably not gonna make like huge stances but i'm definitely gonna try to get leverage on some drivers right now the drivers that are showing the most leverage to me are alex bowman aj almendinger uh, some of the chalk guys actually don't look too bad, like Ty Gibbs, Joey Logano. SVG is getting positive leverage there, Chris Buescher. Worst one for me is Eric Jones right now, which is kind of scary because he is starting in 38th, but I mean, he just hasn't really shown much where he'll have speed this weekend. And it's not like you absolutely need him. If he was the only guy in that price range that was starting in the 30s, he would probably look a little bit better. But for $100 more, I can play Brad Keselowski at 6900 bucks. I'd much rather do that. I can play Noah Gregson cheaper, starts a spot further back. I'd much rather play him. He was faster. You also have Kobayashi, who's interesting. Chase Briscoe's right above. I'm starting in 32nd. Like, I just don't really think I need to get to Eric Jones too much. So, if he's going to be in the mid teens for ownerships because he's starting in the very back. I definitely want to be underweight on that. Hopefully, he just doesn't luck into a top 20. 
but he looks pretty bad. He was really bad at the road courses last year, backed it up in practice and qualifying this time around. So that's like the one guy with mega place differential that I'm more than likely just not really getting to. And also Austin Cendrick, I don't really think anyone's going to want to play him today. He's priced right around all those place differential plays and he starts in 11th, but he is showing some positive leverage. I got him off more around 15% of the time. And if he comes in around 10% where I have him at, it wouldn't hurt to take a couple of stabs in tournaments little bit if he's starting at 11 but we know he is a good road course driver what's up clint happy race day what is up sean fresh off his 5k win in f1 last night shout out to, shout out to sean for that so it's time to take down the load clint says he's taking on the mini max i can feel it he did it many times last year i wouldn't be too surprised sir race day can't wait Others says, what's the over-under? Whatever it was, I hope you hit the over. What's up, Parker? Says, does RCR stand for Road Course Racer? But is, Gish, is Bush a good play today, or will they be off again? Bush was good at the road courses last year. Looked pretty fast in practice, if we're looking it up. I know we didn't have a great sample size, but it was six in the one lap in practice. And if we're looking at the road courses last year, I took out Chicago just, be, just because I don't really think that's a great statistic to look at, because Chicago is pretty random. But in the five race sample size, minus Chicago for Kyle Busch last year, average lane position of 10th, three top five finishes, four top 15s. More than likely, he's going to be a top 10 contender today. So I think Busch is a pretty good turn to play. Plus, I do think Shane is going to have more ownership. And he starts four spots further up, and he's $300 more. So if you're looking for a direct pivot, just play Kyle Busch over SPG. And pretty similar upside, in my opinion. Now, I have SPG projected better, but we're not talking a major difference. You know, RCR is hard to predict. I mean, they're just a team that it can be on, but they can be way off. And a lot of times they seem to be way off, especially at the short tracks. But road courses for Kyle Busch, he tends to do well. CJ says, come on, CP, your hair looks fine. We had to get a perfect. CJ says, who's ready for the driver to cross the white line and go to the rear? I'm sure, it'll happen many times today. It's going to be annoying. What's up, S3? Says he's got Blaney. Byron, Gibbs, Reddick, Kobayashi, and another 800 and under. Well, I don't see no Gregson, so I'd probably play no Gregson at that point. I'm here. It's late. Brett says, you play Blaney today, S3? Prepare to sweat, probably. Yeah, Blaney's not exactly the best road course racer out there. He did show some life later half of the season. Was 16th in practice on the one lap. And if we're looking at road courses in general last year, I was finished at 17.2, running position of 20th. Three top 15s. I think Blaney's in play today. I have him optimal around, what was it? Right, right around 24% of the time, 24, 25%. So yeah, he should be in your lineups today. Although I feel like the ownership will probably be pretty similar to that. So it's not like he's an outstanding play. He's just kind of there. I do prefer Chase Briscoe a little bit more for a couple hundred dollars less though. And I like Joey a little more. Isaiah says, Almondinger, Blaney, Bowman, Busher, Bush, and Castain. How does it look? Thank you, Chris. All right, so we got Chastain. That'll be that'll be pretty low on. I don't mind that. Bush is a nice pivot off of SVG. Busher, I don't think it's going to be extreme chalk just because of where he's priced. Same with Alex Bowman. Like, I think that's a solid tournament build. That's yeah, solid. Good morning, Andy. Shark Killer says, let's get this DK money, my friends. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Just avoid the penalties today. So fresh and so clean. What's up, Shady? Says, good morning, sir. Lock button Larson. I'm going to have a lot of Larson on FanDuel. So we'll see what happens there. But he is, he's too cheap over there, in my opinion. And if we're looking at practice, Larson was ninth in the one lap, second in the five lap, which I don't know how much I want to put into the five lap because not as many drivers ran that. But he was only behind Ty Gibbs in that category at the very least. But his overall lap times look pretty good. So, starting at 15th at 10.5, what's that the equivalent to like on, fan, on DraftKings, like a upper eight, low nine? I gotta take advantage of that a little bit. I'm here, Jared. Sam says, "All right, it says I'm live. You guys can hear me. Please let me know." Says that's a lock for Chris to say. Every video, easy money. Already today, gonna be a great day. 
It really is. I was actually thinking about that before I go. I'm like, I say this every single time. Yeah, that's like the one thing in life that's always going to be free money. What's up, Mundo? Angela says, top large field GPU plays. I kind of already went over my tournament, guys, for the most part. I really want to repeat myself. But I think you can add Kyle Bush into that group. Especially since that's what he's going to have decent ownership, I'd imagine. So, Carmi, Darren says, are we just playing PD today? No, not just playing PD, although it'll make a good chunk of your lineups, but I still think you want guys like Byron, Reddick, Bell, Gibbs, littered around your, your builds, especially in tournaments, because I think it's pretty likely one of those guys will end up winning the race, and you'll more than likely want the race winner in your build. If you're playing cash games, I think one of those... Drivers is fine, but I don't think I'd push it past that. A little bit of risk there. Andrew says, Max the driver starting in the top 10 for you on DraftKings and Fandle. Well, look at some of the builds. A lot of times it's typically a max of two drivers, it seems, inside the top 10 in most of these builds here. I mean, the mid, the mid pack and the back of a pack, I mean, there's just so many good plays here. Like most of these builds I'm looking at, without any settings or anything, either Byron or Gibbs, one of those guys, and then it's pretty much either the mid-range with guys like Dinger, SVG, Kyle Bush, or then it's McDowell, Logano, Kostowski, those guys at the back. Probably the best way to build. And I was looking at some of the previous optimal lineups and kind of got a similar theme to it. What's up, Steven? He says he's new here. Well, welcome. Trying to understand the scoring difference between DraftKings and FanDuel. I'm primarily a FanDuel customer for NASCAR DFS. So the scoring of FanDuel, it's less reliant on dominator points and kind of just about finishing position. Place differential, you get half a point, and for each lap led, you get 0.1 point. There's no fast laps on FanDuel, and you don't get the full point for the place differential. Over on DraftKings, it's like 0.7 points total for the dominator points when you add in the fast laps and the laps led. So it's obviously much bigger deal over there. Plus you get a full point for place differential. That's really the only differences. The finishing position is kind of the name of the game over on fan, the way and place differential. Like just a projection difference. I'll give you an example here. So I have Reddick as my number one projection on DraftKings. And I have Ty Gibbs at number three, William Byron at number four. But over on FanDuel, I have Reddick at number two, Gibbs at number four, and then Byron down like at number nine. Just shows the bit of a difference there. I probably already answered that for the FanDuel plays. Lineup construction, cash versus tournaments. If I'm playing cash today, I think myself, I would pick one of either William Byron or Ty Gibbs. You don't have to. But the way I'd want to go, I think I would prefer that. And then after that, you're pretty much just kind of going place differential. If you want to play SVG, I think he's cash worthy. But other than that, you're looking at Michael McDowell, Noah Gregson, Joe Logano, Chase Briscoe, those kind of guys. Michael says, how much to change that shirt to a Bengal shirt? Oh, no chance. Now, this isn't a brown shirt. It's a baseball squad, but it's always going to be Cleveland. Mark says, I'm, I'm expecting chaos. My top players are Bowman, Gibbs, McDowell, Chastain, and Bush. I'm just like any of those guys, and I will halfway expect chaos as well. Now, I would prefer a boring race, but I don't think we'll get it. Whenever I want some, probably not going to get it. Gibbs or SVG? I believe projection-wise, I have SVG slightly edging him out. But that's with a conservative projection of like fourth place for Ty Gibbs and 10 and a half laps led. So if you want to bump that up, like sure, I could say Ty Gibbs. Especially if he wins the race, you'd rather have him. But projection-wise, it's SVG for me. What's up, Ryan? It's Hi, Chris. For single entry DraftKings, thinking of a core of Byron Bowman, Busher, and Stenhouse. Think the pair of Elliott and Almendinger or Trix and SVG. I would personally probably take out a Stenhouse out of my core. I just don't really see a reason to have him in my core. Starting in 30th, Looking at his road course track record last year, wasn't terrible. Average 
22nd, three top 15s, but I'm not really expecting much out of Donald Sherry practice 28th. And there's just so many other PD plays. So I don't really wouldn't want to put them in my core. But the pair of Elliot and Almendinger or Truex and SVG, I think I'd prefer the first one there. Charles says, Larson, Byron, or both? Let's win some money. Well, both's the option. I'll take both. Uh, but the 1v1 on DraftKings, I have Byron one point higher. Projections are very tight. This week, so it really comes down to your build. Like, do I have anybody up front? Do I want anybody up front? Well, if I don't have any up front, and I do, I play Byron. If I already do, I play Lars. Bowman or Cindric? I will take Bowman there. Any idea of predicting who's more likely to go for stage points instead of flipping the stage for track position? I'd love to know team's plans beforehand. I know Parker Kligerman did that at the beginning of the Xfinity race, but ended up running, uh, running for this race win at the end. So we'll see what happens. Joey Legato needs some points, but he's so far back enough, I don't really think it matters too much. Because I was looking at some of the point standings yesterday, and Joey Legato's down in the dumps, but other than that, as long as they have extreme place difference, I don't really What's up, Stump? Says it's good, guys. Have a great Sunday. Let's hope so. What's up, Obi? Thoughts on Kobayashi? I got him projected for around 26 points. That's 3.7x. It's not bad. Gave him around a 20th place finish. But this is not really stacking up as good as some of these other guys. I prefer him over Eric Jones by a little bit. But I don't like him as much as you know, Gregson, Frisco, Kowski, those other guys in the price range. Michael says, what do you use to make yourself so shiny? I don't know, my shiny? I put beard oil on, but I don't know. That might be it. Mark says, do you like Gregson over Priest or Stenhouse? Yeah, Gregson's one of the, I don't call him easy, but he's like the easiest guy to get to down there. Chris, how is Briscoe at road courses? You now coming into the Cup Series, I thought he'd be pretty good, but he hasn't exactly been credible. We're looking at his 11 race sample size in the next gen. Chase Briscoe, average, finish of 20th, running position of 17th, two top 10s, five top 15s. Like, he's not been amazing, but you don't need to be amazing. It's 7,100 bucks starting in 32nd. If you can run 10 for a top 20, you will take it. He was 14th in the one that in practice as well, so not too bad. No problem, Clinton. Great A says, yo, Chris, glad to see you in the best bedhead hair in the DFS industry. Appreciate it. Sex Fandle went down on the 20 max, but I'm double dipping on Fandle and DraftKings in both 20 max. Wish me luck. Well, I wish you the best of luck, Great A. Wish you the best. Hopefully good. Did the 20 max go down? I just reserved it, but I didn't really look at what the payout was. McDowell, Bush Larson, and Ty Gibbs for the win. I don't think it's a bad lineup. I think that's bad. Whenever I see 17, I always think of Ricky Stenhouse at first. And I'm like, wait, that's not Stenhouse. Darren says, Bowman, Busher, or Gregson Gibbs on DraftKings? Tough one. Let me, let me see what the projections look like. So I got Ty Gibbs at right around 45 points. And I have Gregson at basically 30. So we're talking like 75 points there. And then Bowman and Busher, we have Bowman at 35 and Busher at 35. It's very close. I guess I would give the edge to Ty Gibbs in them, but it would depend on my build. If I don't have anybody up front, I might want to slide Ty Gibbs in more. If I already have William Byron, I'd probably lean towards that. Or whoever, maybe Tyler Reddick, I'd probably slide in the Bowman Busher one. So it's kind of a roster production. Been a question there. Byron Gibbs, too risky for GPP. I could see some builds. If I'm building 20 lineups or 150 lineups, I could see where that filters in. But if I am playing a single entry, I don't think I would go that route personally. I will have it in some lineups, but I'm not making it a... If I'm hand building, I probably am not doing it, though. Kai says, am I a sleeper? I think so, Kai. You have potential, for sure. Michael says, what do you think about these possible drive-through penalties today for skipping the S's? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to know who it might be. I'll probably be the guys I have. So I'm just preparing for pain. But if it's not, I'll be thankful. But it's going to happen today. Hello, Mr. Jules. 
Hi, Anson. Good luck, everyone. We're going to need it. You're going to need it. Thank you for stopping by. Jim says, hi, Chris. What's up, Jim? Your thoughts on Kyle Busch, Edge Allendinger, Gibbs, McDowell, Bunny, and Legato? I think it's a good build. You have your dominator with Ty Gibbs, and it's pretty much all PD after that with Bush, Jeremy McDowell, Bunny, and Legato, which I think will work out. Got a donut from a man. Big guy. Because I know you're midstream, but my checks keep bouncing at the bank. I really love being your makeup artist, but not for free. <laughs> Can you contact the HR department, Gib? I think a sniper usually handles that. But I think you did well today. But, uh, you weren't supposed to see the bounce checks quite yet. I do appreciate the dono. Uh, thoughts on Gregson? I like Gregson. I mean, he's like a staple for cash games. And other than Gregson down there, I mean, I just hate all the cheap plays. Like the 6k range, just well, the 5k range is terrible, and then outside of the 6k range with Keslowski and Gregson, I mean, these are awful looking guys. Uh, Mark says, Thoughts on John Hunter check starting 22nd. Toyota's could dominate today, just in a tough spot. I got him projected to finish 24th, right around 20th point, 20 points. Not really a guy I'm getting too much. I have Mothman around three, five percent of the time. I just think it's a really tough path for him to work out more so than guys like Kaslowski or No Gregson, really. What is that, Bull? Nick Holdem says, Good morning, CP. Come on. I'm late again, so don't repeat yourself if you answered already. But what are you doing with Gregson in tournaments? I see him with close to 40% ownership. I am thinking a fade. Yeah, I am projected right around oh, 37% for his ownership, is my projection. I don't mind being. Pretty even on that, or maybe slightly overweight. There's just not that many good cheap plays down low, so you're kind of like forced on him and a couple of other guys. I mean, he can't go backwards at the very least. Pick one top four starter to build around. Go Lopes. I'm assuming that's a March Madness thing, maybe. But if I had to pick one guy in the top four, like starting position wise, I will take Ty Gibb. Jeepers of the bunch, and it looks like he's got the best car. Yeah. Oh, Gibbs and Brad Keselowski or Bowman and Busher for DraftKings, DraftKings cash. Uh, I feel like Bowman and Busher might be the safest uh, bunch for cash games. He says, do you absolutely need a driver starting in the top 10 today? I don't think you absolutely need to, but I wouldn't be shocked at all. But a guy in the top 10 or maybe a couple guys starting in the top 10 being the optimal. I don't avoid them on purpose, but if you have a lineup that doesn't have them, it can work out like if you played SVG, Dinger, McDowell, Busher, Bowman, Kislowski, Gregson for a lineup, like that can work out. Happy race day, Keith. What's up, David? Dinger, Blaney, Busher, Byron, Gibbs, Logano, and tournaments. Thoughts? Good build. You got, you got Gibbs up front, and the rest is, well, you have Byron and Gibbs together. So just know the risk with that, because if one's leading laps, the other one's not. And there's not that many laps to go around. So if you are building with Gibbs and Byron today, you have to assume they pretty much split the race and finish like 1-2 or 1-3 or something like that. Because it's not like it's a Bristol where one can lead 100 laps and you finish 10th and you still got your 50 dominator points as a cushion. That's just not going to happen today. So keep that in mind. Like all the drivers though, but there's a lot of risk with that. Tim says, do you see anybody to potentially bet to win outright besides Gibbs, Byron, Reddick, Bell? And SVG. No, I'm not really showing any value anymore. A bell at, I don't know if these are numbers are completely up to date. These are before the stream, but I saw Bell at 850. I still have slight value on that, but everything else is just cooked, I think, at this point. The closest one I would be on. Yeah, there's really nothing, actually. It just it killed all the lines. Yeah, Bell is, you can get a Bell at 850 or above. That's like the only thing I would consider at this point. It's Bubba or Logout? I feel like Logout's the better option right there. <laughs> Has anyone been penalized and forced to the rear? Not that I have saw as of yet. I mean, you can pull up Bob's Twitter and see if they mentioned anything. See what he's doing.
No, not seeing anything. Did Bob give his pick to win yet? Did not. Oh, he did. He's picking Reddick. As you guys know, Bob likes to kill the driver that he picks to win. But his top five was Reddick, Byron Gibbs, McDowell, and Elliott. Long shot, Bush. But no, I have not seen anybody to the rear yet. And I don't think I'd really care as long as it's not like one of those drivers striking inside the top five. Tyler says, any chance Haley holds position? He seems to be one of the better road course drivers. He is. He is pretty solid at road courses. The problem is I just don't really trust a Rick Ware car starting that high. I just don't think he's going to be able to hold the position the entire time. There's going to be restarts. I just don't see it happening. Very tough road for Justin Haley today. Like, I gave Justin Haley a 24th place finish. If you look at the heat map here. With Haley starting 13th. If he held his ground, Haley's getting 30 points. But even then, we're talking like pretty much an absolute ceiling for Justin Haley. If he finishes top 20, which I think would be a good day for Haley, it's only 16 points. I just think it's a really, really tough path for Haley today. Um, Beto says, different sort of question. Do you think SVG cares about stage points, thinking about using him in a points lead that gives out stage points? Colleague is trophy, trophy hunting. So, I think SVG is here for one reason, and that is to win the race. I don't think he cares about much else. What is the DraftKings optimal? I mean, mine has... Byron, SVG, Gibbs, McDowell, Lugano, and Gregson, but I don't love the idea of playing one, two together. Now, the thing is, it's not like they're $10,000 a piece. You're getting Gibbs in the AK range, and you're getting Byron in the 9K range, so it's not like it's... It's easier to get to than it would be, rather than like a Chase Elliott and Tyler Reddick starting one, two. So it makes it a little bit easier. That's why the reason I think it pops up more often than I would assume it would. But I got them both projected for around 45 points, both finishing within the top five and getting some dominator points then. Not my favorite. Kobayashi on Fandle, all right. Um, what is he priced on Fandle again? Fifty eight hundred bucks. I mean, if you're in a pinch, yes. But Fandle wise, I mean, I don't have to check the phase. I got around forty points. I feel like he could do a little bit better. Apparently, he was pretty good in the sim, though. But I mean, obviously, it's a little bit different actual race tim says what do i tell my barber to get that cut you got for real though uh, i get a mid drop fade and then we just kind of extra the top that's what i would say cool says if you're doing 150 do you x out the 5k guys or do you set them to like five to ten percent um i don't think i'd x them out they're probably not even gonna pop up anyway unless you're forcing things if you're going to leave any of the 5K drivers, I would probably say Freeze, Barry, Ben House, maybe, but I don't really even think you need them. What's up, Red Wave? Thank you for giving me some pre race entertainment every Sunday. Glad to hear that. Larson, SVG, Gibbs, Bowman, Logano, and Greg, some thoughts. I think it's a very good build. You got your one guy up front with Gibbs. You have Larson SVG, who could be top five contenders, honestly, race winning contenders. The gun on Gregson just got to just limp across the finish line, and they'll probably gain 10, 15 spots, maybe. Then I like Alex one a lot today for tournaments. Should have some decent speed. Car looked good in practice. His overall lap times look good. Good at Coda, good at road courses, cheap, and a 100 car. So I think it's a pretty good build. Dark says, press like, peeps. Goes a long way and would help me out. For Bowman or Dinger, I will take Dinger between those two. Uh, C. Davis says Dinger, Bowman, Busher, Larson, Lagana, McDowell for cash. I think that sounds pretty good. I'm trying to think if you're missing anybody. I think Gregson will be kind of a staple in cash games today, but honestly, that's a good looking bill, so I'm not really sure who I'd take out for him. I think anyone going to the back that I know of as of right now? Bush is Kush. There's a lot of good plays today with many. With not many dominator points. 
Very true. Not too many to go around. Also, I just got a dunno from a right that I did not see till just now. I apologize. For some reason, sometimes they don't they just don't show up. I don't know why. Says hi. Anybody to the back and lots of passing today? As of right now, nobody to the back and lots of passing today. Hopefully, we'll see TBT. Now, last year at the road courses, they were kind of brutal, but at least we have stage cautions back for the entertainment purpose. I'm not sure if that'll be better for DFS though. But I do apologize for just now seeing this. I don't know why it doesn't show up at the top sometimes. Or we said single lineup, Larson, Testain, Bowman, Reddick, and Butch. I think that sounds good. You can build some fun lineups on FanDuel today, sir. Sure. Mm. Top five drivers to win the race. Wait, my projected finish for these guys are Reddick, Gibbs, Byron Bell, and SVP. Dick says, Blaney Logano, Keslowski, easy fades. I mean, there's definitely guys you can get away from. I'm not sure if it's easy. I mean, they, they don't need to do much. But there is guys like around them. Like, instead of playing Logano, Keslowski, and Blaney, you can easily play Busher, Bowman, and, for example, Ace Briscoe. One easy way just to switch. And the projections are really not that far off. Here, let me check Bob's Twitter again. If anything. There's no expectations for any rule changes today. Changes curb. Oh. Not much. Alright. Hard take today? Huh, I should have a hard take. I mean, I, I said who I want to be overweight on in tournaments. I say like Dinger, Bowman, Busher. But I don't really think I have anything too crazy to say outside of what other people are saying. But probably see Gibbs buying a Reddick race for the race one. But again, that's not. <laughs> uh, Sean says, please don't forget to mention I won my F1 contest by 40 points. Sean. You won your contest by what, 40 points? I thought it was 27. Maybe that was after the update. Hopefully he got out of bed by now, anyway. Uh... Yeah, I mean, you're definitely gonna have those guys that stay out for the stage points and the guys that hit beforehand so they can cycle back to the front. That'll definitely be a thing. Good morning, Mar Ross or Daniel? Uh, between that bunch, I think I Ross a little bit higher. Yeah, I got Ross four and a half points higher than Forrest today. Cindric or Briscoe on DraftKings? I prefer Briscoe. Oh, yeah, we don't need any more Bengals fans in here. But it is Ohio against the world, always. Uh, Larson, Bush, Gibbs, McDowell, Logano, Gregson. Thoughts? I like that lineup. I think I already answered. Dawson said, I'm late. Did C Pen tell y'all his Patreon stuff has been murdering Xfinity and trucks? Well, yeah. I haven't mentioned that, but we we have gotten to the Xfinity and truck streets now, and we've been doing pretty good. We've been doing pretty good. Unfortunately, the SVG penalty sucked. Big suck. Gives finally breakthrough this week. I think he might, Zan. I know. I know you'll probably be excited for it too, but he looks pretty good. I think he's got the best car. It's just a matter of. Staying clean, avoiding penalties, good pit stops. That's really all it's going to come down to because it looks like he's got the car and we know he's got the talent too. This might be the week that Ty Gibbs gets his first cup win. Truex or Bowman? I will take Bowman. Benny says, got the hangover globe. <laughs> Definitely not hungover. I don't drink. Drink my water though. Okay, says, is it crazy to use Gibbs and Byron and draft Kimmy's cash? Yes, I think so. Like, projection-wise, they look good. But I think in cash games, you need more of a floor. And while I think they'll do well, I just... If one guy gets a penalty at the wrong time there, you're screwed. So I don't really like both in cash. I think one is fine, though. C. Davis says, Gibbs, Larson, Dinger, Logano, Kaslowski, and McDowell for cash. That's also solid. I think Tigers will be very chalky today. Logano will be McDowell. Yeah, it's fine. 
Logano or Blaney, I prefer Logano. Very similar upside, but he starts a little bit further back, so just take that one. Chase or Larson, I prefer Larson today. Like Liker says, thank you for sitting up here every week giving hope to our lineups that we know have no chance to get. <laughs> You're welcome. I do what I can. Another dono that for some reason does not pop up. I don't know why. I apologize, Pugsley, but he says Redick, SVG, Dinger, Busher, Cindric, Gillen, four tournaments. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely off the chalk a little bit with Gillen and Cindric. You're also avoiding Logano. You don't have McDowell. No Gregson. So, yeah, I mean, for tournaments, that's fine. Gillen will certainly be pretty low owned, but I think he's a pretty underrated road course racer relative to his price point. Guys, learn from Knockout. Says, thanks for all your hard work. You're the man. You're the man as well. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for the dono. See, that one showed up. I don't know why. I don't know why they're it's picky. FAL says, true X Bell. Gibbs, Larson, and Keselowski. What do you think? Must be a fan of Bill since we have five. Uh, I don't know how much Truex I'm going to end up getting to on Fandle. I ran a quick 150 at some point when we were talking. Let me see if he pops up at all. Yeah, he's popping. Okay, so if it's like a 150 with zero settings and no randomness, he pops up 10% of the time. So I feel like even if I add some randomness, we might get some Truex to pop up a little bit. Because he is pretty cheap on Fandle. Definitely more appealing on that site. Because on DraftKings, he's close to 10K on Fandle. He's, what, 8200 bucks? Yeah, I don't, I don't mind that build. Because I do think Truex can run within the top 10. Favorite GPP play? I love Alex Bowman today. Hate having a flag planted on Alex Bowman. I mean, that dude just... He screws me a lot. But... Based off of what everything I'm looking at. On paper, it looks like a good play. On paper. Now, it's totally different from actually putting it on the track. But it's all we can really look at is what, they're on, what they look like on paper beforehand. Can you play Gibbs and Reddick? You can. You have to understand the risk with that, though. Just know you pretty much need them to finish top three and trade dominator points. So you need kind of perfection from them. But, I mean, they're two of the most likely guys to do it. Uh. AJ says, thank you, Josh Balicki, for not dominating this race and making it a snooze fest. I know, right? Thank goodness. I'm tired of him doing that every single year. AJ okay, says, can we stack my manufacturers today? If so, who would you stack, Ford, Toyota, or Chevy? I mean, I'm not going to personally do that, but if you were stacking manufacturers, I'm probably not stacking Ford. <laughs> they definitely look like they're uh, a step below the other better squads today. But I'm not I'm not really doing that. What's up Jason? Call Chastain's gonna be pretty low owned. Is he a GPP target for you? Yeah he's gonna be pretty low owned today. I currently have him opt him more than he's gonna be owned but at nine thousand bucks. He's just one of those guys where like I don't really have a strong stance on Rosh Chastain. Like I could play him or I could just play Bowman starting eleven spots further back. I could play Kyle Busch starting further back. Unless Ross wins, not a ton of upside there. Like he'll be decent, but not a priority. Tyler says, What are the odds the pole sitter misses turn one? <laughs> uh, well, how do you say his name? Connor Zilsich? Zilsich, something like that. He was awesome in the truck race, like absolutely awesome, but he just straight, I heard in the first turn. I, I missed the beginning portion of the race as I was recording the video. But I heard he just went straight into turn one and didn't turn. So hopefully that doesn't happen today. Albert says, hey, Chris, good luck this week. Good luck to you as well. I got Gibbs, Chastain, Dinger, Bush, and Cindric so far. I'm thinking about Gregson to fill out the lineup. You can play small field GP, so I don't mind the chalk. Yeah, I mean, Gregson's probably your best filler option down low. For sure. Can't move Benny back more backwards. And he'll probably move up. I believe we have two cup races for him in the cup series at road courses. I believe that's what it is. They were in different cars, obviously, but I think he finished like 20th and 23rd, I believe. Let's see if I have. I believe it was just a one race sample size last year. I have Johnny Pitches up around 17th. Finished 20th. Obviously, a different, different ride this time around, but he should be able to move up. I mean, he will, but no matter of how much. 
Almondinger or Gibbs on DraftKings today for GPPs. I have Gibbs projected a little bit higher. So if you don't already have like a Byron or a Redick or someone like that, I think Redick, uh, Gibbs would make a lot of sense there. Cindric Logano, Blaney, last man in on DraftKings. I would prefer Logano. Rick Ware, car always an issue at some point. I remember Joey Hand running very well, and then at some point it just broke. <laughs> it was like every road course. I start McDowell or Suarez in fantasy. If it's DraftKings scoring, I'd prefer McDowell. I don't know exactly what scoring you mean by fantasy. In my three max builds, I'm getting a lot of Dinger, McDowell, Bowman, and shuffling them with different combos of Gibbs, Byron, SPG, Larson, Bush. As a mind, so I think you're on the right track. Hopefully we're on the right track. Rick says, Fandle, Gibbs, Larson, Bush, Chastain, and Truex Jr. The tournament build. I mean, you're avoiding some of the place differential plays, but you're just banking on the high finishing position potential. I think that lineup looks really good in that, in that aspect. Some of those place differential plays don't get there. Uh, Big Buster, Larson, Gibbs, Busher, Bowman, Gregson, Dinger, GP thoughts. I mean, that's good. I mean, GPP targets I like a lot. Busher, Bowman, and Dinger. Gregson will be chalky. Giz will be chalky. Larson will probably be in the 20s. But, I mean, you're avoiding Logano at the very least. You're avoiding some of these other guys. The roster construction is fine for me. Jet says, SVG, AJ Gibbs, Busher, Bowman, and Dem Logano. I like that. I do hate Logano. <laughs> GPP on DraftKings pretty good i mean joey's gonna be i mean if you don't want to play joey it's a tournament you could always switch him off to like a briscoe and the, the upside is very similar but if you don't care about the ownership fine yeah i mean i'm not super excited about john hernie check today this is the problem is he's starting in 22nd okay, i feel like he can probably finish somewhere close to that which is what i have that projected but when you have guys like gregson Kislowski starting 39, 36 in that price range. This is harder to click on his name. Banji for the win? Maybe. I don't, I don't have him winning, but he'll probably be a top five contender. I did talk about Truex. So I'm sure you've heard that by now. Do you have any picks you like? What do you mean by that? And he says, Cindric fade and sub in Blaney or Logano. I just don't think he will lead. I doubt Cindric will lead either. I'd prefer Logano over Blaney. Appreciate it, coach. Uh, this is Larson, Busher, McDowell, Bush, Gibbs, or Fanthal GPP? Yeah. I don't really see anything wrong with it. Gilland? DraftKings only for Gilland, but I won't have much of him. I just don't really think there's a need to go down that low. I'm projected pretty similar to John Hunter Nemechek, but Nemechek's just a little bit higher. I'd... Once you get past Gregson down there, I and mean, you just all this place stuck. Maybe not currently. Is going get Byron Gibbs too much rounding out with popular place differential? In some builds, it's fine if it's like a large field, but it just, if I'm hand building, it feels a little bit tough. I mean, they could run one too. Wouldn't surprise me. I think they got the two best cars in the field. And they obviously have track position to work with. You just got to worry about potential for penalties or just someone getting spawned. We've seen that plenty and plenty of times. But they're cheap enough to where it projects fine. Like I have Gibbs for 5.1x. I have Byron at 4.53. But at the same time, they're not projected as high. But there's just a better floor with guys like AJ Allmendinger. 8800 bucks. The SVG at 9500 bucks. Actually, I haven't projected more than William Byron today. What about Denny? Nobody is on him. Denny is cheap, so that will get people's attention. The problem is, is the starting spot. He's starting in eighth. I haven't projected for 27 points, projected to finish around 13th, which is not a bad day for Denny Hamlin. I think he'd be happy with that. Somewhat happy. He probably wants to be in the top 10. But at the road courses last year for Denny Hamlin, we saw him What up. Average running position of 14th. Had one top 15 finish, three top 20s. Didn't typically qualify well at the road courses. And if we're looking at the next-gen era in general, running position of around 17th and 
Still only one top 10 finish the show for it and three top 15. So I think he can run in the top 15, but that's not going to be enough at that price. Because if we look at who he's priced around, you have Michael McDowell starting in 27. Even Swore is in 19th. Ty Gibbs in second. AJ Allmendinger in 14th. You have Busher, Alex Bowman. Like he's just in a range where it's so hard to click on his name because he's kind of at his ceiling almost. Yeah, Donut for Man Spread. Appreciate that. Says you were the man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you back, Spreader. As always, thank you for being here. Is 4,800 too much to leave on the table on FanDuel? It seems a bit much. I'd like to hear your lineup, though. Any thoughts on Van G? I like Van G today. Van looks like he's projecting pretty well. Jordan says go blue. I don't have much on interest in college, so I'll, I'll let you have the go blue. <laughs> I mean, if I had to pick a team, it'll either be Ohio State or Florida since I live here now, but I, I'm not really into college at all. Don says, hey, Chris, I noticed Cindric seems like a good top 10 bet today. How do you like him in GBP, buddy? So I have Cindric projected for 28 points, 3.9x value. It's just hard to get there. I mean, there's just so many good plays in the 7K range where, like, yes, it's easy to say Cindric looks like a good tournament play, which I am projected for right around 9 to 10% ownership. I have him off on 15 to 16%. So I guess projection wise, yes, he does look like a good tournament play if he can finish within the top 10. But you need a lot of bad things to happen to these PD guys, like a lot for him to be in the optimal. So having a really tough time to get there, even though looks like he's got some slight positive leverage. Gibbs, Reddick, okay to play in the same lineup for GPP. Yes, I mean, you're pushing it, but if they can run one, two and trade dominator points, I mean, you need, you almost need perfection out of these two is what I'm trying to say. Like, it's possible, yes, but you need them to run pretty much their ceilings. But the top three cars today, I mean, they pretty much qualified top three, and if they just don't get screwed over today, they should run top three, you'd imagine. But should and could and... What are all that stuff? I mean, there's a lot that can happen in NASCAR race. We know that. Hmm. Douglas says, you think SVG's chances are hindered by the colleague car as opposed to the track house car from last year? I don't really think so. I mean, we've seen, we've seen AJ Allmendinger perform very well and not the best equipment in the world. And they're trophy hunting, and they know this is kind of a track that yeah, they can trophy hunt it. So I don't really have any concerns there at all. Well, so he's going to grab some lunch and I'll see you in voice chat. Good luck, everyone. See Peter the Goat. Good morning. <laughs> good morning to you as well, Bull. Hopefully, you enjoy lunch. Some good food. Any thoughts on Nemechek being lower owned, even though he's in a JGR car? I mean, I just don't having a real hard time getting the too much to Hunter check. If you want to play 5% of him today, I'm fine with that, but I just think there's better options. All right, I'll check that mass. I'm probably almost done here with the stream, so. Going just over an hour. I think I'm almost caught up to the chat. No, almost. I'll try to go quicker. Uh, Cliff says, I can't decide between Lagana, Kostowski, Briscoe this week. Any advice? Well, projection wise, I have that slated as Joey, Kostowski, Briscoe. I do think Briscoe could potentially be the lower owned of the bunch there. And I think the upside's very similar. So, I mean, if I'm going to play Briscoe just to get off of that, Joey Lagano chalk, no problem with that. No being talked up, but I like Priest more. I like said the 6.5K drivers are just bad picks, but Priest has performed decent at Coda. I mean, it's mainly just the starting position thing. Like, sure, if Priest finishes 24th, like, that's decent. But at the same time, if Gregson finishes 25th, the same day overall, from just the NASCAR finish point of view, but for DFS wise, I mean, that's way slated towards no Gregson's favor. I don't really see. Ryan Priest throwing together a top 15 finish. Because if we look at the, like, the heat map here, Noah Gregson finishes 
to like 25th, he's getting you over 30 points. If Ryan Priest finishes 35th, or not 35th, 25th, he's getting you 16 points. Priest, if he wants to get 30, he's got to finish inside the top 18th or better. And for Gregson to get 30 or better, we only need him to get barely a top 25. So it's just a little bit easier. I wouldn't say it's a stack the front type of race, especially since we have stage cautions back, but some of these guys in the front do look pretty solid, but I don't think you have to stack them up. Thoughts on Cindric for a small field GPP? He shows slight positive leverage. There's just so many good 7K plays around him. He only had one top 10 finish at the pro courses last year. So he was definitely down last season, but I mean, if he can hang around the top 10, sure. But again, if we're just looking at a heat map here. If Cendric wants 30 points, he has to finish 12th or better, which I think is possible, but still, even then, we're just not giving too much cushion there. But if Logano needs to get 30 points, I'm not saying you can't play them both together, but Logano only needs to get a top 24. Just the path is so much tougher, especially for a single entry. Someone says head to head, who finishes better? Oh, Kyle Bush versus Denny Hamlin. I'd rather have Kyle Bush there. Reddick versus Larson. I'd rather have Reddick. Swords versus Chastain. I'll take Chastain and Bowman versus Cindric. That one's probably closer, but I do have Bowman slightly edging him out there. Bowman, Briscoe, Busher seems like the core this race with 9,100 left, average for three. Yeah, I'm fine with those three. Definitely fine with them. Flip says, let's show Fandle some love. I've been talking plenty of Fandle. The three Bs? There's been a lot of Bs today. Uh, how do I feel about Prius, Gillen, and Nemechek for value? It's not really getting to much of any of these guys. Kobayashi, a good punt. I'm fine with getting to him a little bit. In the 7K range. Again, there's just so many good 7K guys, but I prefer Kobayashi over Eric Jones. I haven't pretty much projected the same as Denny Hamlin. Uh, just came in, but cash recommendations after Blaney Logano. I'm playing cash. I'd probably want one of the two of uh, William Byron, Ty Gibbs, and then Joey Logano, Michael McDowell. Those kind of guys that fill in Noah Gregson. Yeah, 6200 left on DraftKings. Any suggestions? I think the leads are already Gillen, doesn't it? Yeah, I'd just play I'd play either Gillen or John or Nemechek. I got them both projected right around just right around 20 points. Kind of a coin flip there. I think I'd put I'm Nemechek just slightly higher. I don't really have too much interest in Eric Jones, no. I just I just don't really trust the speed of road courses. It was bad than last year. It doesn't look like he has any speed this weekend. Sure, if there's a major carnage, he could get there, but I just think there's better plays. I don't really have much interest in Eric Jones. Russ says he can't trust Kyle Bush. I understand that. He is hard to trust. And what's up, Andy? Just please hit the like button on your way out if you haven't done so. It really helps see Penn grow his channel. Sure does. Yeah, Hamlin for DFS purposes is just really hard to get there, especially where he's priced. If I am playing Reddick, would you recommend paying up from Gibbs to Dinger? I think Dinger pairs better with Reddick compared to Ty Gibbs. Because if you're playing Reddick, you need him to get up front. And if he is up front, Ty Gibbs is not up front, and you're not getting the points. Like, sure, if they split it, they split the race, it can work out. But I think Dinger pairs better. Do I think SVG top five is good? It would depend on what odds you get. I got, um, let me see what I have. At. You can get them at 161 or better, plus 161 or better. Those are the fair odds for me for the top five for SVG. But based off of what I've seen, I don't think you're going to get that. Maybe you will. I was just looking at some of the draft odds, though. SVG Bowman or Bush and McDowell? 
Well, if it's a tournament, I think I prefer SPG or SPG and Bowman route. I probably answered that Gibson Reddick question as you were typing that one. Low owned tournament value pivots. I mean, just the cheap, the cheap value today is atrocious. I mean, if you're playing any of them, though, I guess Gilland, Gahan Nemechek are the best of the bunch that aren't named. No Gregson, Brett Kislowski in the 6K range. Other than that, it, it's just bad down there. Travis Miller says, I think skip mine by accident. It's usually always an accident if I skip. Bowman, Gibbs, Chastain, Blaney, McDowell, Dinger on DraftKings slots. I also have Bowman top 10 bet. And Chastain up five. All right, so we have Gibbs up front. I like that. Got Bowman in the middle. Chastain's going to be a, Chastain will be your wild card, but that's a solid build. Nancy says, Come on, Chris. I need you today, bro. I gave you an answer. <laughs> I don't know what you want. <laughs> you can get SVG at plus six, 161 or better at top five. I mean, I like, other than that, I don't know what to tell you. I think it caught up to the chat. So I got to build my lineups. I think locks at what? 330? 345 on handle. Let me see. Yeah, 330 on handle. So that's 345 on DraftKings. So I'm going to have to go build. Uh, got a couple more questions here, then we'll get out of here. Fred says, Chewing for the top five today, and SVG kind of slacking. That suck. I mean, I think SVG can finish top five, but I don't have them projected for that. But again, it's all odds based. Like, if I think someone's going to win, I'm still not going to bet them if they're at the wrong odd. That's what you're asking. Like, I have Tyler Reddick as a projected winner today, but there's not a chance I'm betting him at whatever it is. What is it? Plus 400, depending on where you look. I'm not going to bet that. Just got a hump for value. I think that's what you're asking me. But projected finish-wise, no, I have SVG at 6.99, which, which it is the fifth driver, but at the same time, it just depends what odds you get. All right. I think that's all we got. I wish you all the best of luck this week. I forget where we are next weekend. Is it Richmond? I think it's Easter next weekend or something like that. But whatever it is, I'll be looking forward to it. I wish you all the best of luck today. Appreciate y'all being here. Thanks for the donos. And hopefully we can avoid the penalties. Hopefully we can avoid wrecks. 